All right, this video, we're going to show you how to get rid of one of the most frustrating elements of the golf swing that we hear golfers complain about. It's this sliding or over sliding in the downswing. We're going to do that by looking at where you need to be at the top, where you need to be halfway down, which is a great benchmark to look at, and then where things need to be by the time you strike the ball. All right, Sean, let's first talk about, we're going to talk about the top of the backswing, where things need to be, but let's preface that by where things start from at address and then how they get to the top. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, we talk about the A-frame. So get your feet just outside the width of your hips. Right. Um, you know, bend forward as your dress, flex your knees. You don't want to have your hips slid forward or back this way at all at a dress. You want to just kind of be in the middle, hips fairly level, maybe a little bit um, banked away from the target. That'll get you a good spot to start from. Right. So you mentioned the A-frame. So really, you don't you get them too narrow. We see a lot of guys with too narrow hips. That's going to really kind of be tough to stop all that sway because you want that dynamic move in the golf swing. You're going to generate some forces, so you need that frame there. Obviously, it could be overdone, so just think outside the hips. Think hips instead of shoulders. Yep. Now, at the top of the swing, so let's say the hips, my hips are going to be like on gears, zero, zero, where the mm -hmm. hips start at zero, zero. At the top of the swing, I want them right back in the middle of that A-frame. Right. I don't want them too far to the right, I don't want them too far to the left. That's literally textbook recenter. Yeah, so... You know, set up at zero. Let's say you go an inch away. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to the top, you want to be backed into where you start. That gives you a pretty good benchmark. And if I put down, so if you go a setup and I just draw, this is a good way to check this when you're watching your swing or filming your swing. Just draw two lines straight down each leg to create that that A frame. Obviously, his hips are going to be at the center of that at the start. At the top, mm -hmm. you want to see the hips right back in between those two lines at the top. Yep, little breakaway here through the line. And as I'm finishing my turn, whoop, right back to the right there. And that's it. So that covers where you want to be at the top. It's pretty simple. It's literally back to the center. That's where the recentering term comes from. So the first thing we want to highlight here with this major champion is what we talked about with the A-frame setup. From the top view, it's really easy to see how he has his feet wider than his hips. So he can create a nice base that allows him to shift dynamically without sliding. Oftentimes when we see a player who slides too much, either in the backswing or downswing, there's a tendency to have the stance too narrow. This is an easy first place to look and an easy one to correct. Next, let's place a line outside of each leg. These are good lines to get into the habit of drawing when you look at your own swing on video. Using these lines is an easy way to see how well you recenter yourself during your swing. As he starts moving, notice a small move into his trail line. This is a small shift to the trail side that ranges from what you see here to about the width of a golf ball with a seven iron. It's normally a bit more with a driver. This move to the trail side happens early. Then as he continues to the top, you'll see him fall back to the center of these lines. I gotta stress that it's a fall rather than a push from the back foot. Look to see your hips pretty evenly spaced between these lines, avoiding being hugged up to one line or the other. Also look to have your upper body on top of your lower body. Again, you don't want to see it leaning too much to one side or the other. This is what recentering looks like. So now that you've got yourself at the top in a good spot, pelvis is back to where it started, back in the middle between your A-frame. Now's where we're going to really kind of break down the downswing because it's helpful in a lot of cases, especially in such a quick movement, you know, just a quarter of a second for the downswing to look at a halfway point. And for us, it's between left arm parallel and shaft parallel of the downswing. Basically, roughly half the downswing, where do we need to be at that point? Yes. What happens after that happens in a, less than a blink of an eye. Yeah, so we've already had our little uh, breakaway shift away here, yep. about an inch. We've recentered the body back to about where it started, so call it zero with the pelvis back to the middle. As I get down into delivery here, hands about waist high, I'm going to be about three or four inches forward with the pelvis. Right. And the torso. And that's the key, right? We see a lot of golfers who will either dive this out in front or throw the hip out in front. You really want to be covered at this point. Most of my weight, pressure, everything's going to be on this front leg, and my buttons are pretty much going to be over my zip. Exactly right. So you've, you've gotten this great platform to hit from here, um, and you've done it pretty early, right, in the downswing. Right. You've gotten there. You kind of settled in to get ready to ramp up that last part. And this is really the point in the golf swing where, my lead hip has moved just about as far as it's going to move in the downswing. Now it's time for the center of my pelvis, which is what we measure, to start to catch up to it. And that that's kind a key. Of, that's a very good key. So let's talk about, before we talk about the next piece, let's talk about a good way, a good way to drill this for your golf swing. Yeah, so you're going to need your camera, 
I'd yeah, say, right. and maybe a little line drawing app, a lot of bunch of free ones out there. Sure. Draw your line. So set up an address. Get the camera face on, pointing right at your belt buckle, waist high. Okay. Draw two lines, just like you mentioned before, one outside of each leg, just barely maybe one pixel outside of each okay. leg, so you can see a little bit of movement. So you'll see yourself break it through, break away through this line, or what you should see when you film it, break away through this line a little, back in toward the middle, and then you can swing down and put the brakes on even. Or you can just hit the ball and make a swing. But the key there, go back to your video, scroll it down, and you should be half a leg through this line mm -hmm. at delivery. Right? Right. And that's pretty much where that, that thigh should stay from this face-on video is kind of halfway through that original left side of your A-frame. Yeah. And, and we'll cover this in a little bit, but the rest of it will come from this right leg coming. Yep. And you can drill that by just backswing, putting the yeah. brakes on right there. You may be over it. You may be under it. And it'll really start to, if you can think of this halfway point, gives you a really good way to process because impact is just a flash. So like things are happening much slower to this point in the downswing. So if you're good by there, chances are you're going to be pretty good at impact too. Here's the point in the downswing where a pro has moved both the center of his pelvis and the center of his rib cage exactly four inches forward of where they were at address. Now this exact number will be unique to you and your dimensions, but three to four inches is a pretty common number we see here with great players. This is what it looks like to take the recentering move you had at the top and place it right on top of the golf ball. You're looking at a great example of what covering the ball looks like, and it's a hallmark we see in great ball strikers. Now, if we put our lines back up that we had at address, you can see how half of his lead leg has moved past that front line. This is another good visual checkpoint when you look at your swing. All right, so to finish this off, we're gonna go from that middle point down into impact and beyond. What's going to change with that left thigh being through that A-frame line? Yeah, so you're, ha you're half a leg here. Mm -hmm. You're going to allow this trail side to come up and meet the lead side. So it's, it's going to rotate out in front of you here, out towards where your hands are, and you'll get a little bit more forward because of that. It's not much. Right? So let me go back. Let's call it another inch. I'm going to be your, your wall right Okay. Here. So you're going to put about, this wall is going to be about a fist okay. off your thigh. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I've gone to the right a little bit. I've recentered. I'm almost to it, right? Your, your yeah. leg's in the middle of that A-frame line. Now the right side comes around and sends me a little more into this. That's right. Punks. So there has to be an end point to how much this left hip goes down the fairway. And this is probably the biggest sliding culprit that we see with golfers is, okay, I know I've got to be forward at the golf swing. They'll think of it in terms of left hip being way down the fairway instead of the center. Yeah, so, so the 3D motion capture system measures the center of the hip. So right. we know that halfway down, let's call it four, as the right one starts to come out and around to meet up with the left one, I usually put my thumbs like this to show people mm -hmm. how it works. That sends you the rest of the way forward. Also helps you get the proper tilts in there so you get in that classic impact position. As he moves into impact, the first thing to notice is how his left leg hasn't moved that much more towards the target. Because he got himself in position early with a good recentering move, he's able to stabilize his forward sway much earlier than what we see from players who are late to their front side. And as we watch him move into impact from the top view, you can see how he rotates his hips so that his left leg is pretty well positioned right on top of his left ankle. This is something else to shoot for when you're looking at your swing. You don't want to see your left hip backing up as you come into impact, which is working away from the target, nor do you want to see your left knee or left hip shooting out past your ankle. These are excellent images to keep in mind as you're working on your swing. A lot of golfers who will struggle with swing will try to fix it by taking this left hip backwards, actually, through the hip. Okay, yeah. That's not going to help you. So put, hold your, yeah, hold your uh, okay. club of fist width. So Mike makes a great point. So let's say I'm in a pretty good spot here, right? I'm close to it. I know I've got, eventually I've got a, get open too, right? right? So what they'll do, they'll hold this trail leg back and spin and they back away from this line. That's a kiss of death. That's a wipe move and I'm going to hit the shaft like that really low, start cutting across the ball too much. And on gears, we don't see good golfers back that center, right? We're tracking that center of the pelvis. We don't see them back that up coming into impact. No. It stays up and it goes forward on through mm -hmm. there. So again, Fixing one fall with another fault is never something we'd recommend doing. So it helps to have the right concept 
you have the right concept, then you know what to work on. And if you know what to look at while you're working on, you can really start to change your swing for the better. Put some lines on the screen when you're swinging. Use your feedback. Drills. Use your feedback. Look at these benchmarks in your swing. If you're not quite there, take the time to make sure you're doing the right movements. It'll start to flow together. You've learned it so you don't have to think about it anymore. Then you'll start to have it in your golf swing. If you found this video helpful and you need more help with your consistency, we want to help you with that. Go to the first comment below this video. You'll see a link. Click on that link. We'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.